Viserys Targaryen was truly the heart of House of the Dragon. He's an amazing character and beautifully tragic in his own way. But in a way, Viserys was not just a victim of the disease that corrupted his body, but also of his own choices and decisions. The overall theme of Viserys Targaryen, the overall theme of Viserys' story is a simple one. Good men do not always make good kings. This is something that George R. R. Martin has often said, and is honestly one of his best quotes. I, I mean, I think an awful lot of fantasy, and, and even some great fantasy, falls into the mistake of assuming that the good man will be a good king. That is, all that is necessary is to be like a decent human being, and then when you're king, of course, everything will go swimmingly. And, um, you know, you, even Tolkien, you know, who is the, I think, my respect for Tolkien no, is second to none, and all modern fantasy flows from Tolkien. But there's an unspoken assumption in his books there that, you know, return of the king. Aragorn is the king now. Everything will be, will be hunky-dory. You know, the land will prosper and it'll be wonderful and the crops will be good and there will be justice for all and the enemies will be defeated. And, you know, you never, you never actually get into the nitty-gritty of Aragorn ruling and, you know, what what is his tax policy and how does he feel about crop rotation and um, you know how does he handle land disputes between two nobles both of whom think that they should have this particular village so they take turns burning it down in order to uh, uh, establish this claim uh, the, this is the hard parts of ruling and uh, be it in the middle ages or now and of course it's not enough to be a good man to be a, a, an effective ruler, and it never has been, you know. Viserys Targaryen was not a bad person. Hell, as someone who often complains about Targaryens being too much far in the blood, I can appreciate the fact that Viserys was a peaceful king that did not burn his people. However, I can't help but state that he was not a good king. Now, this was not entirely his fault. Viserys was cursed with a terrible disease that was slowly killing him. This affected his ability to be a king and a father, of course. Not only from a physical, but also from a psychological point of view, as Viserys seemed to be losing his mind in the last years of his life. However, with all of this being said, Viserys' failures should still be acknowledged. Viserys is probably the most human character in the show for me. He wasn't a bad person, he never even killed anyone, never sentenced anyone to death, even though that was his power as king, he could have done that. At most, he cut other people's tongues, or threatened to do so, but still, in a medieval world, this says a lot about his merciful nature. Viserys had many flaws as a person. Some of them feel very natural, like yeah, most people in real life have flaws, even if they are good people, even if they have generous hearts. This is not to say that the guy is a complete pushover, as he does have some scenes where he threatens minor lords, his council, his brother, or where he gets mad at people, which helps us understand that the guy does have some fire in him. But there are also other scenes where he shows too much weakness. I mean, by episode 5, getting exiled from Viserys' court is like getting exiled from Moe's tavern. The problem of Viserys' rule overall was a problem of image. Viserys looked weak in many cases. Take the scene where he struggles to kill a deer in episode 3. While Rhaenyra kills the boar with great fury and rage, and Daemon faces the crab feeder's army all alone, Viserys struggles to kill a defenseless deer. This makes him look weak in front of the men that applaud him. Oh god, the fact that he was the first Targaryen king to not have a dragon did not help either. I mean, fuck, no wonder Daemon has the curse to steal a dragon egg in episode 2. What was the worst Viserys could do to him with Otto and his men? Daemon has Caraxes, so good luck fighting that, you guys. All of this being said, his overall weakness was not Viserys' biggest failure. And no, I'm not talking about his final death scene where he mistakes Alicent for Rhaenyra and tells her about the prophecy which she mistakes for him saying that he wants her son to become king. That scene is bullshit, but it is not his biggest failure. In my personal opinion, his biggest failure was his parenting skills and his treatment of his children. I mean, it seemed like this wouldn't have been an issue at first. In episode 3, Viserys throws a royal hunt in the name of Aegon's second birthday and publicly berates him. By doing so, he even undermines his own daughter Rhaenyra. Still, he seems to like Aegon at first and wants to be a good father, but Things evolve in later episodes and after the time skip. In episode 6, we see that Viserys is a lot more tired and less energetic. This obviously affects his ability to be a father and a king. He seems to show interest in the training of his sons and nephews, but still, you see that he is distant because he's sick and cannot really get involved in said training. For me, the defining scene for Viserys' relationship with Alicent and her children 
is in episode 7, after Aemon loses his eye. Viserys is angry at what happened in this scene, but his attention is not directed at Viserys or Aemon, but at the insult that Aemon used and that caused that fight. Alison tries to tell him that Aemon is his blood. His, not hers. Desperately trying to have Viserys remember that Aemon is his son. I mean, any other father would have been furious and would at the very least have disciplined Viserys, if not worse. I mean, can you imagine what he would have done if Rhaenyra had been the one to lose an eye? But instead Viserys cares more about the insult and the rumors than his son losing an eye. The Your Blood line is a reference to the book, where Alicent wants to marry Aegon and Rhaenyra together and Viserys refuses to, explaining that Aegon is Alicent's blood, that is why she wants him on the Iron Throne. I think this is a pretty fucked up way to see them, as if their high tower ancestry makes them dirty or less Targaryen, less of his bloodline, as if they are not pure enough to sit the Iron Throne. Now, this is not how Viserys sees his children in the show, of course. He does not believe in Targaryen purity and inbreeding, that's for Daemon, but he does ignore them, and therefore he can't help them resolve their issues and help them become the best versions of themselves. And my father never wanted this. That's not true. He had 20 years to name me heir and never did. Steadfastly, he upheld Rhaenyra's claim. He changed his mind. Wow. He could have, but he never did. Because he didn't like me. Like, does he even know about Helena's dreams? Think about it. Do we even get a scene between Viserys and Helena? Like, you know, his other daughter? We can assume that Aegon and Aemon also get a similar treatment. I mean, look at the family dinner scene in episode 8. Aemon and Aegon are the only ones who don't give a crap about it. It's clear that they resent this family reunion and Daeron... Well, the showrunners kinda forgot about Daeron, so no wonder Viserys did too. The fact that Viserys failed as a father for Aegon and Aemon is actually a pretty big deal. Because without a father figure, Aemon had no way to express his anger in a healthy way. Except for training, I guess, and... Aegon... Well, fuck. Okay, but what about Rhaenyra? Surely Viserys was a good father to Rhaenyra, right? He loved her so much. The best fucking scene in the show is all about Viserys doing everything in his power to defend his daughter's honor, even though he's literally rotting in front of everyone's eyes. Well, there is more to this than that. You see, Viserys may have loved Rhaenyra, like truly loved her. This is seen by the fact that he favored her so much. However, this doesn't necessarily mean that Viserys was a good father to Rhaenyra. Being a good father is not just about loving and supporting your children but also about educating them in the proper way. And Viserys didn't really do this with Rhaenyra. At first, he kept her a cupbearer in a small council, even after naming her heir. And even though he allowed her to eventually have a seat of her own in the meetings, he did so because she pressured him. The main problem is that not only did Viserys shield Rhaenyra and stop her from being involved in politics until she pushed really hard for it, but he also failed to teach her about duty and responsibility as a ruler. And, you know, some basic common sense. Like, Rhaenyra made many mistakes, like going to a brothel with her uncle, and screwing her sword protector and losing her maidenhead before marriage. But this gets even worse when you realize that Rhaenyra did literally the worst thing she could have done as a woman in her position. Yes, for our modern standards, this is actually kind of silly. I mean, imagine disliking a woman because she had sex before marriage. Rhaenyra is a sexually active person, and there is nothing wrong with that. But because she is a woman in a medieval society, that is literally the stupidest thing she could have done in her position. The stupidest thing she could do in that place and time. Especially because she's supposed to be setting an example for women all across the realm and for potential female rulers in the future. And her biggest mistake was not just having three bastard children, but leaving King's Landing at the same time as Harwin as well. Man, can you imagine the rumors after that? I don't know, this is not exactly Viserys' fault, but I think that the reason why Rhaenyra thought she could get away with this sort of stuff is because Viserys was too lenient and too tolerant with her. Like the whole affair with Chris in episode 4, I mean, him refusing to accept the truth about Jason Luke, etc. Viserys has an insane favoritism towards Rhaenyra. This is what creates a lot of the resentment that Aegon and Aemon seem to have over Rhaenyra's side. This is not a healthy type of parenting for Rhaenyra or for his other children. The overall theme of Viserys Targaryen is clear. Good men do not always make good kings or leaders. Now, this is not to say that Viserys was a bad father, of course. He did not mistreat or beat or traumatize his children, but he failed to prepare them to rule. And at the end of the day, neither Rhaenyra nor Aegon are fit to be rulers. In the end, the audience is left to choose between the lesser of two evils. Overall, to give Viserys some credit, he tried with all of his heart to fix the divisions that he had created. He literally gave everything he could in that family dinner speech. But 
it was too late. This is the tragedy of Viserys Targaryen. He died thinking he had done a good job, that he had fixed the divisions within the House of the Dragon. But we know this is not true. The divisions are as strong as they've always been. We know that. And we know that war is now inevitable. Yet Viserys probably had the most peaceful death that we'll ever see in the entire show. Seriously, the future seasons are gonna be pretty dark. Anyway, if you made it this far, thank you for watching everyone. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed this video. Or not if you didn't. Thank you for watching until the end and goodbye.